In 2019, Miami broke ground on what was supposed to be a five-year project, an $802 million bridge featuring six sweeping arches that would transform the city's skyline. Five years later, in 2024, it should have opened. Instead, only two of the six arches are complete. Costs have ballooned to $866 million and a new completion date, 2029, making this a decade-long saga. And it all started when engineers had to convince Florida to break a 50-year ban on a foundation technique the state swore it would never use again. So what went wrong? Why is Miami spending nearly a billion dollars on a bridge that most cable-stayed bridges would cost a fraction of? And with all that money and time being poured in, will this actually fix Miami's traffic nightmare? Or has it become an expensive monument to ambition gone wrong? This is the story of Miami's signature bridge. The history of this mess goes back to 1971, when Interstate 395 was completed. This 1.29-mile highway corridor became a critical artery connecting connecting downtown Miami to Miami Beach and the Port of Miami, quickly handling over 450,000 vehicles through the Midtown Interchange every day. The problem? I-395 was built with only two lanes in each direction, barely adequate when it opened and hopelessly inadequate within a decade. By the 1990s, the corridor was chronically gridlocked. By 2025, those same two lanes remain overwhelmed, causing constant traffic jams and long delays for the half million vehicles that depend on this route daily. By the early 2000s, I-395's aging infrastructure compounded these problems. The highway was falling apart and the traffic was unbearable. In 2010, the Florida Department of Transportation finally announced a major reconstruction project, not just to fix the traffic, but to attempt to undo some of the historic damage and reconnect the neighborhoods that had been torn apart. FDOT could have simply widened I-395, added lanes and called it a day. That would have been cheaper, and faster. But the authorities saw an opportunity to do something more ambitious. Instead of just building a functional highway, they decided to create an iconic landmark, something that could become a symbol of Miami's transformation and economic viability. In 2015, they hired renowned Donald McDonald Architects, the firm behind the eastern span of San Francisco's Bay Bridge, to design a landmark. The result was the fountain. Six sweeping arches meant to symbolize streams of water cascading, inspired by Miami's coastal identity and its role as a cultural crossroads. The initial vision carried a $600 million price tag. But as engineering plans took shape and the design's complexity became clear, costs climbed. By April 2018, when the design-build contract was awarded, the price had reached $802 million. But before construction could begin, McDonald and the engineering team had to answer a critical question. How do you actually build this thing? The fountain wasn't just an artistic vision. It was an engineering puzzle. Every decision, from the number of arches to the construction materials, had to balance aesthetics, structural integrity, and the brutal reality of building over one of Miami's busiest corridors. The design team spent years working through the challenges. Here's what they decided. Why six arches? Miami's signature bridge uses a cable-stayed design with six arches rather than the typical one or two, and there's a structural reason for that. First, it's practical. The bridge must span 1,025 feet across two busy roadways, any 2nd Avenue and Biscayne Boulevard, while keeping traffic flowing during construction. The solution? Build it in phases. Four arches supporting the westbound roadway, constructed first and open to traffic, then two arches for the eastbound side, completed second. Second, it's structural. The six arches vary dramatically in size and geometry. Spans range from 300 to 650 feet, with heights from 180 to 330 feet. The tallest arch reaches roughly the height of a 25 to 30 story building. All six converge at a single massive center pier, with each arch carrying different loads and requiring unique engineering. Third, it's symbolic. The six arches spring from the center pier like streams of water from a fountain, representing Miami as a place where diverse communities come together. This setup increases traffic capacity by 50%, adding three lanes in each direction. With the design finalized, the numbers were staggering. The entire I-395 reconstruction project, including the signature bridge, 1.4 miles of highway improvements and connector ramps, comes with a price tag of $866 million. The I-395 corridor itself, which includes the bridge, accounts for roughly $556 million of that total. To understand why that's so expensive, 
Consider this. Florida's conventional segmental box girder bridges built between 1998 and 2001, similar highway overpasses, cost between $86 and $112 per square foot. Cable stayed bridges with signature architectural features? Anywhere from $450 to over $1,200 per square foot. What drives the cost difference? Most cable stayed bridges use one or two support towers. Miami's design features six arches of varying heights and geometries, far more complex than conventional cable stay bridges. Unlike standard precast bridges where segments can be mass produced, the vast majority of this bridge's 345 segments are so unique that the precaster couldn't standardize their construction. Each 90 ton piece is essentially custom made. But the real cost multiplier isn't just the design, it's the location. Building over two active roadways means construction happens almost entirely at night to maintain traffic flow. This dramatically slows progress and multiplies labor costs. At the COVID-19 pandemic, supply chain disruptions causing 36-week waits for custom components, and Miami's hurricane season forcing regular shutdowns, and you understand why costs have climbed from the original $600 million estimate in 2015 to $866 million today. With the design finalized and the contract awarded, construction officially began in April 2019, targeting a fall 2024 completion. But before engineers could start constructing the massive arches, they had to deal with the soil beneath Miami, which couldn't support the bridge's massive weight using only Florida's standard driven concrete piles. These piles have been FDOT's preferred foundation method for highway projects for over 50 years, but they simply weren't strong enough for this project's extreme loads. After extensive analysis, the engineers proposed using a technique called auger cast piles. This method works by drilling a hollow stem auger into the ground to the required depth, then pumping high strength concrete through the hollow shaft as the auger is slowly withdrawn, creating a continuous pile without ever leaving an open hole. The result is a stronger, more stable foundation than traditional driven piles. However, there was a problem. Due to a bad experience with a subcontractor over 40 years earlier, the Florida DOT had been reluctant to approve auger cast piles for any of their projects. After multiple discussions with Keller, the foundation contractor, and reviewing Keller's successful use of auger cast piles in over a thousand structures throughout the Miami area, the FDOT design team finally agreed to allow the technique. The solution required over 2,000 of these massive piles, each three feet in diameter and drilled up to 134 feet deep into bedrock. Today, these piles anchor the center pier, which is the core of the structure, and is packed with over 5,000 cubic yards of concrete and 1.7 million pounds of steel along with an embedded monitoring system to track the bridge's structural health during and after construction. But solving the foundation problem was just the beginning. Next came an even more delicate challenge, assembling the arches themselves. With the foundation complete, crews faced what would become the project's most dangerous and time-consuming task, installing the bridge's precast concrete segments. Each of the 345 segments, weighing 90 tons, had to be transported by truck, lifted high into the air in the darkness of night, and precisely positioned over active traffic flowing beneath. The margin for error was zero. One mistake could send a segment crashing onto the roadway below, potentially killing dozens of people. The segments are held together by post-tensioning cables that require millimeter-level precision. A single misalignment could compromise the entire arch's structural integrity, forcing crews to dismantle everything and start over, adding months to the schedule and millions to the budget. To achieve this precision, crews rely on GPS and laser guidance systems, working slowly and methodically through the night. As of September 2025, only two of the six arches are complete with the third nearing completion. This painstaking process, combined with COVID-19 disruptions, supply chain delays, and hurricane season shutdowns, has stretched the project from its original five-year timeline to nearly a decade. The signature bridge is supposed to open in late 2029, three years from now. Given this project's track record, don't bet on it. This project has made way too many promises, including improving hurricane evacuation routes for Miami Beach and adding a 33-acre heritage trail beneath and, most anticipated, reconnecting the historic Overtown neighborhood. And yes, traffic should actually improve if the 50% capacity increase delivers as promised. However, due to numerous setbacks, critics still argue that the money would have been better spent on rail transit. But the supporters think that this bridge will become a Miami landmark, as well as a major engineering feat. All things aside, this will be the first FDOT highway bridge built using auger cast piles. But the real question remains to be answered. Will it become Miami's Golden Gate Bridge? 
or just an expensive failure 2029 awaits. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and don't forget to ring the bell icon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next mega build story.